In the not too far distant future, hopefully you'll be able to buy some smart home tech, get it home, plug it in, and it'll just work with whatever ecosystem you favor, whether that's Alexa or Google Assistant or Apple Siri. But at the moment, in 2020, that's just not the case. You might buy some smart home tech and find that it doesn't work with your chosen ecosystem. That's particularly the case with Apple's HomeKit that has very poor support at the moment, it has to be said. So, is there a way that you can solve that? That's the subject of today's video. We're going to be adding HomeKit support to a non-HomeKit device. Now before we go any further, it's probably worth taking a moment to talk about what HomeKit is and more specifically, what it isn't. You may think that HomeKit is the Home app on your Apple device. Well, actually it is and it isn't because Home is just an app, but HomeKit runs on the operating system and is actually used by lots of apps, not just the Home app. It's used by Siri Shortcuts and also by third-party apps such as the Philips Hue Smart Lighting app. So we need to find something that's going to do the job that the app developers haven't done. Something that's going to talk to HomeKit from an app that wouldn't normally support it. Now it just so happens there's a third party open source project out there that does aim to bridge that gap. And bridge is the operative word because it's called HomeBridge. Now for HomeBridge to work, you need to put it on a spare computer. So if you've got an old PC or Mac sitting around, that's ideal candidate. But actually, you really want something small to put it on, so maybe a Raspberry Pi would be a good idea. Now, because it needs to run permanently, there's an obvious candidate in my home for what I should run it on, and that is my Synology NAS. Now, if you've got a NAS, like a QNAP, for example, it will also run on that. So it's worth certainly checking out the homebridge.io website if you're interested in the project, because there are a variety of platforms that you can run it on. So today we're going to run this on my Synology NAS, we're going to install it on the Synology, uh, but if you haven't got a Synology um, and you're interested in running it on a different platform, please stick with the video because other steps later in the process will still be relevant. So I'm going to access my Synology now by using the web interface. And I've got here Disk Station Manager and I've logged into my account. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install something called Docker. And if you go into the package center on Synology, and then we'll see on here it's listing all packages. I'm gonna search at the top here and I'm gonna search for uh, Docker. And you can see you've got an option there to install it. So I'm going to install Docker. Once Docker's installed, you need to fire it up and then we're going to start doing some configuration with it. So the first thing I'm going to do now that I'm in Docker is to click on the left hand side the option registry and then in keywords at the top here I'm going to type in Homebridge and search and you'll see the top option here is Homebridge which I'm going to select and then you've got a, an option at the very top of the Docker window that says download so I'm going to hit the download button and then it'll ask please choose a tag and you want to leave that on latest. So now we'll do select. And you can see on image here on the left hand side that we have Homebridge latest and it'll download. You can see on the right hand side here, we have 163 megabytes. And if I hover my mouse over it, you can see you get a little animation to tell you that it's downloading. Right, it's downloaded now. And you can see we've got a system event here saying that the Docker image Download is complete. It was actually 506 megabytes, so it was telling you how much it had downloaded. Now with it selected, you can see that I've got some options here, including launch. So I'm going to click that button to launch. And then I'm going to click advanced settings. And then I'm going to click on here, enable auto restart. This means that if the, the Synology uh, goes down for some reason, in fact, I got one on a schedule to restart, turn itself off for a few hours overnight then uh, it will auto restart when the Synology starts back up again. So next we need to go into the volume folder and we're going to add a folder. Oh, it's created a Docker folder actually. Open that Docker folder and I'm gonna create a folder in there, which I'm going to call Homebridge. And we'll okay that. And then we've got a folder in here in Docker on Homebridge. So I'm gonna select that. Docker Homebridge, and now you want to select a mount path, and for that, just put forward slash Homebridge. Next, we're going to click the Network tab, and you'll see here we've got an option Network Name. 
But what we want to do is to actually move down here to the bottom and click this icon that says, sorry, this tick box that says use the same network as Docker host. Next, also in advanced settings, we're going to go into the environment tab and we're going to add a new variable by clicking on the plus button at the very top here. And what I'm going to type in there is DSM underscore host name. And now we're going to go into the value field and then it's going to be the name of my Synology NAS. Now, the way you can find that out, if we go into the control panel on the left hand side here, you'll see in this system on the left hand side of the list, we've got info center, I'll click on that. And then if I go into network tab, and you'll see at the very top, it's got my server name. I name all my server equipment after literary detectives because I am a nerd, I am a geek, and I'm also a sad git. But you know, it's good that I know that about myself and I can share that with you. Uh, so anyway, mine's called Sherlock. Let's carry on. And so in here, I'm going to type in Sherlock. Now it has to be, it's, this is case sensitive, so you have to put it in exactly as it shows uh, in your info settings. Well, I'm going to apply that. I'm going to change the container name now to just say Homebridge, because that's a bit of friendlier name than the, than the default. And I'm going to go next. And then it'll give me a little summary there of the various bits that I've set. So home bridge, CPU priority also is fine. So it's not going to absolutely muller the device while it's doing other things. I'm not worried about memory limits. You can see all this, all these things here we can set as the defaults. So that's absolutely fine. Not worried about any of that. So there we are. I'm going to apply that. It's applying the settings. So that means we now have a Docker setup. All this is is a container. So this might be your PC, your Mac, your Raspberry Pi. But in here, I'm using Docker on my Synology NAS. And that, if you like, is a little computer that's going to be running Homebridge for us. So that's all the geeky bit done. Now we need to get Homebridge running on the home app on an iOS device. So the next part of the process is to add Homebridge into the home app. I've got it on my iPad here. You could use your iOS device uh, or you can't do it on the home app on Mac OS Catalina. Yes, I don't think you can anyway. What I'm gonna do is to click the plus at the very top of the screen and I'm going to choose to add an accessory. Now it fires up the camera because it's expecting us to be scanning a QR code, but we're not gonna do that. You have to tap the here where it says I don't have a code or cannot scan. So we're going to tap that and we're going to do there we are nearby accessories. It's found Homebridge. So I don't actually need to do anything. It's found it there. So I'm going to tap on that. It's an uncertified accessory. So that's fine. I'm going to add that anyway. And then it asks you for a code. Now the default code on this and it tells you this on the Homebridge website. So you don't have to remember it is 03145154. And then it says, as you can see, adding Homebridge, and it says Homebridge is added. And it says additional setup is required. That's fine, so we're gonna click done. Okay, we've got Homebridge. Now what we need to do is to install plugins. And this is the clever part. The open source community have used their skills to create plugins that bridge the gap between the non home kit supporting devices and home kit. And we're going to be putting on ring because I recently bought a ring alarm system. It doesn't work with home kit. Thank you ring, even though they said it was going to about four years ago. Uh, so I'm going to use this. I'm going to use the ring plugin for home bridge so that I can give home bridge home kit support to my ring devices. So to do that, I'm going to go into container on the left hand side here. I'm going to select my home bridge installation and then I'm going to click the details button and you can see there's a whole load of stuff that's going on inside here. Now if you see on the top we've got some tabs here I'm going to click terminal and this is going to give us access to a, to a terminal to be able to install some extra plugins so Homebridge can actually do some stuff. The easiest thing to do here is to click create and launch with command. And in this box, I'm going to type in sh, which is a shell for what we use to uh, send commands to, uh, to Homebridge to add Docker installation. So I'm gonna click on that and click on sh. And you can see here, we've got a prompt that is enabling us to install various things on this installation of Docker. Now, if we go to the Homebridge website, which is homebridge.io, if I scroll down, 
there's a nice box here that we can use to find a plugin. So I'm going to type in Ring because I particularly want to install Ring plugins. And then here we go. This is Homebridge Ring. So if I now go back to Sherlock, and I'm going to type in the following commands. This is npm space install homebridge hyphen ring. So it has to be exactly, let me go, exactly as it showed on here on the website, homebridge dash ring. And the first part, npm install, is the installation command, uh, npm being a package manager. So let me just press that return key. It's not just downloading Homebridge Ring here. What it's doing is I'm downloading all of the various packages that are needed on the system to run that plugin. But you don't really need to know that. You can just type the command and let it get on with it. So there we are, it's now installed. It gives you a lot of information on here about, about the details about it. It's version 6.1 of the Homebridge Ring plugin. It's all the different packages. You really don't need to know anything about any of that. The fact is that it's installed, that's the most important thing. Now there is some configuration that you will need to do for whatever plugin you've put on. Now what you need to do is on uh, Synology here, I'm gonna go into the file station, but if you're on a Raspberry Pi or a Mac or PC, it will be into Windows Explorer or File Explorer, or whatever it is in order to find the location where we've installed Homebridge. Now here, it's inside a folder called Docker and Homebridge. These are the ones that we specified earlier on when we were installing Homebridge. And in here, you'll see that there is a config.json file in there. And that's the file I want to edit, edit. Now it's really important when you edit this file that you do it in a text editor that's not going to uh, use smart quotes because you can monumentally mess things up like that. So I'm gonna use the built-in text editor that comes on the Synology and we'll go in there, but just say, make sure that you're not using something that's gonna be formatting uh, the, the quotes and that kind of thing. Now the important thing here is this line that says about platforms, because this is where we're going to be putting in the fact that we've got the Ring plugin in the Homebridge installation. So you can see here on the left-hand side of the screen, I'm looking at the Homebridge Ring uh, website with information about how to install it here. And you can see that we've got samples here for the, for the platform, what we need to put into this platform tag here. So I'm going to copy the bit between the square brackets, copy that to my clipboard. And then I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to put that in there. And you can see I've, I've got an extra bracket in there, an extra bracket in there. You need to basically uh, make sure that this looks like uh, the correct format that it does on the, uh, on the website there. So now on here, you would put your email and your password that you use for your ring, in this case, your ring system. Of course, the specifications, the details that you might have to put in for another non-home kit product might very well be different. Now, if like me, you've activated Ring's two-factor authentication, then you do something slightly different. You have to generate a refresh token and you do that using the terminal uh, program that we saw earlier on. It's quite a simple process to do and it gives you um, a, a token that you can then put in to the configuration file. You have to restart this container. So I'm gonna click on the action button here with the container highlighted, and I'm gonna choose restart. That's going to restart Homebridge, restart the Docker container, and that means that the Ring plugin uh, will be active. So there we go, that's now running. Okay, so now on my iPad, I'm gonna go into the Home app, and you can see now that there are a whole load of devices that have appeared on the screen there. And these are all my Ring appliances that it's picked up. And you can see that it's got uh, the Ring alarm is all off at the moment. You can see that one up there is, is showing something and it says office motion triggered. Well, yes, I'm in my office and I've been moving about. So that would be correct. So what I'm gonna do now is, where else have we got? I'm gonna to have to uh, put these in their various rooms. They've all come up as default room, apart from that office motion one, which I, which I just changed. So you can see it says office, but all the rest have come up as default room, but I will change those to be in the appropriate room. So let's find, there we go. So it says there, so we've got the second row down, second from the right, it's office window closed. So let me just open my office window. So I've opened the window there. And then over here, um, HomeKit is correctly reporting that my office window is open, which is marvelous. And what I'll do, let's uh, carry on filming. I will shut the window and you can see over in the distance there that the 
that that has now gone off. So that is absolutely brilliant. Now, if we tap on here, the ring alarm, if I tap on there, you can see that we've got the various options that the ring app would give us. So home, away, night, and as it is at the moment, it is off. So that's good. And also, of course, this will work with Siri voice commands. And I'm going to try the home pod. Let's see what happens. Okay, right. Set ring alarm to away. So there we are, that's, that's set. I'm now quickly going to turn that off. Now while that was going, I got some uh, pop-ups in on my iPhone to say that the, from both the Ring app and from the Home app, to say that it was going ahead. So there we go. So we've got there the Home app. Uh, ring alarm was armed for away coming from, for that. so that's a notification from the Ring app rather than from, uh, sorry, from the Home app rather than the Ring app. So that's it, adding HomeKit support to a non-HomeKit device. Of course, hopefully there will come a time in the not too far distant future where we can just buy some smart home tech, take it home, plug it in, and it'll work. Ah, Nirvana, happy days. But until we reach Utopia, Homebridge is here to plug that gap. What do you think? Would you rather I'd set it up on a Raspberry Pi, perhaps? Uh, have you got any questions about Homebridge and about the whole ecosystem and what it's all about? Post your comments below, and I may do a follow-up video with answers to those questions. I hope you liked the video. Hit the like button if you did. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to know when there's more videos coming your way. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll catch you next time.